Hey everybody, I'm joined today by Jesse Pruitt, assistant coach at Stanford University. And I've decided to put out a series of videos countering the narrative that the things we see in American policing are merely isolated incidents. There's generally a consensus by people who oppose, for example, the Black Lives Matter movement that protests are overreactions to, again, quote unquote, isolated incidents. And what I want people to understand is that the Black Lives Matter movement and other protest movements calling out for racial justice, it's not just about the murder of unarmed black people. It's also about the unconstitutional nonviolent harassment of black people and the non-lethal violent brutality of black people. And my experiences have been that uh, the vast majority of black people I personally know have had personal experience in that, in one of those realms, whereas the vast majority of white people I know have not. And so I'm curious, Jesse, have you ever had any personal experience in those realms, be it brutality or be it uh, harassment? Pete, thanks for having me. Um, I've fortunately have never experienced personally brutality. Um, very lucky in that sense. I've been pulled over uh, a couple times without receiving a ticket because I was pulled over for no reason. You know, one time in particular, I'm driving to Mammoth, California, which is kind of a uh, resort area um, in the mountains. And I'm driving on a two lane highway and I see the lights behind me and I get pulled over and I, I check my seat belt. Uh, I check my speedometer. I'm not doing anything wrong. I, before I left, all my lights work. So I knew there was nothing that I did wrong cop comes over and um, asks, you know, did I just throw a cigarette out the window? And I, I, I almost started laughing at first uh, because never have I ever smoked a cigarette. But uh, as he's asking me the question, he looks in the back. Uh, he sees my young daughter was with me in another car seat in the car and quickly recognized that I'm not a smoker and let me go. And as I drive away, I'm thinking, well, that was bizarre. You know, even if I did throw a cigarette at the car, was that really worth, you know, pulling me over in the middle of nowhere? Um, you know, where I hadn't seen another car in miles. So it was just one of those kind of bizarre things. And, you know, as I'm driving away, I'm thinking, hey, is he, did he see me in a, in, in a nice car going towards a resort area? Was that being picked on? Maybe, you know, and, and those kind of things. It, it was frustrating, but luckily, you know, I was able to, to, to leave and carry on with my business. But that was one incident that uh, really stood out to me. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that, especially because something I've noticed in having these conversations in the past is that there's a bit of uh, what you could call survivor's guilt here, whereas uh, Black people who have that type of experience, nonviolent, unconstitutional harassment, uh, possibly or even likely uh, based on your race, uh, there's a reluctance to speak up because uh, people like George Floyd are too dead to speak up. And so it's like, if I speak up on, uh, on, on police harassment, uh, that feels so trivial to me compared with what happened to George Floyd uh, and many others. And so it feels like sometimes there's a bit of a reluctance to speak up um, on some of these issues. So I really appreciate you uh, being willing to. And then I have one follow-up question. Of the 10 uh, Black people you personally know the best, how many of the 10 have had some similar type of experience or worse with either unconstitutional police harassment or non-lethal uh, police brutality? Uh, 100% every, every one of them. And I would say of that group, half were probably worse than my situation. Um, either, either handcuffed, asked to step out of the car, car searched. Um, and the crazy thing is not one time were any of these 10 that I can think of actually arrested but they were harassed to the point where uh, there was, you know, suspicion on these individuals. 
everybody says that these instances are isolated. If 100% of the black people you're closest to have had these experiences, would you call that isolated? No, no, these are, these are not isolated situations. They're, they're far too common. And I wouldn't either. And uh, coach, we're gonna post this. And like I said, I'm intending to post others because I really feel that uh, as Dr. King wrote about in the legendary letter from Birmingham jail, white moderates are the greatest stumbling block. And we really need uh, uh, white racial moderates uh, to step up and demand that our political leadership act. Um, and so I'm hoping that if we can get the message out there that these instances are not isolated, perhaps we can move the needle in terms of the hearts of the white moderates. So I really appreciate you sharing your story and I thank you for your time as well. Pete, I really appreciate you interviewing me and uh, keep doing the work that you're doing. And I've always believed that growth happens when people can get comfortable being uncomfortable. So these conversations are necessary and thank you again. Thank you so much, brother.